Second week in a row for the SmackDown review. Um, it was good. Then it was good. And then it was good. Then it was really funny. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, it's Pass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, and this is your SmackDown review for January 8th. 2021 we've officially made it through one week of the new year and oh my what a week it's been <laughs> nah, outside of wrestling obviously uh before we get into the smackdown review i want to send a quick shout out to uh my good buddy my co-host jake demarco the last video to go up before this one will be our preview for the uh the, the brackets for the dusty roads classic on uh on nxt it was a lot of fun. Obviously, there were more teams announced after we filmed that. Literally, uh, that went live right after this uh, episode of SmackDown went uh, was finished on TV. And then I recorded this, and then, you know, time hops as it does. Um, problem is, we recorded that on Thursday. And on Friday, two more teams were announced. One was uh, Leon Ruff and Kushida. The other one was the Bollywood Boys, which we haven't seen forever unless you watch 205. And let's be real, nobody watches 205 live. Um... <laughs> It's good. Uh, as I said in that video, though, I want to send a quick shout out to all my friends in the States. I'm not going to get political on here because it doesn't make me very popular. If you want to know my unpopular opinions, go follow me on Twitter or any other form of social media. For here, what I am going to say is all my friends in the States or anywhere else that are involved in any of the crap that's going on uh, down there right now, I hope everybody's good. hope everybody's safe. I hope everybody's uh, behaving themselves, for lack of a better term. Uh, the world, the state of the world right now is shitty enough without shitty people doing shitty things, and that's it. And uh, the big, the big victory this week is getting somebody kicked off Twitter. The world is weird. Uh, somebody said to me right before New Year's Eve, uh, "What if the clock doesn't tick over to 2021? What if it just clicks over to 2020 Special Edition?" And that's what it feels like. Uh, seven minutes into the new, or seven days, I should say, into the new year. Uh, I put I put it up on uh, Facebook for those of you that are friends with me on Facebook. Uh, seven days into 2021, Mick Foley's got COVID, which is terrible. Snoop Dogg's trying to wrestle, which is, uh, which is terrible. Uh, all kinds of other, all kinds of other stuff, and all kinds of violence, just like last year. It's not that different. Uh, just want everybody to be okay, especially, um, I know there's a, I don't I don't bother with the analytics that much on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening to me in the audio form, I only really look at the analytics on YouTube, so sorry. Uh, I know a great portion of the people that do watch slash listen to this channel are in the states, so I can't really say anything else other than I hope you guys are okay. I hope I hope this video or this audio finds you in as good uh, a situation as it possibly can. Now. We had a cold open to SmackDown this week, as I say, January 8th edition of SmackDown. Uh, second SmackDown of the year. We've had two SmackDowns, one Raw, one NXT, one AEW. Uh, and here we go. And didn't didn't the Wednesday night ratings just fall in the... Sh I'm not even taking a side. The Wednesday night ratings took a shot in the nuts, did they not? Uh, but yeah, we're two SmackDowns in now. Cold Open, Michael Cole reminding us that there are two title matches tonight, an Intercontinental Championship match between Big E and Apollo Crews, and a Tag Team Championship match between the Wounded Street Profits and, uh, I guess it's their official name now, the Dirty Dogs, uh, uh what's his name, Bobby Roode and, uh, and Dolph Ziggler, but they also, they also announced what I didn't know going into the show, was that there was going to be a gauntlet to establish the next challenger to Roman Reigns' championship. Oh yes. We start off, as we do, with the head of the table and his minions, uh, Jey Uso and Paul Heyman, coming up. They brag about the beatdown that they did on KO last week in the crowd, so to speak, which is good. He pretends to like um, KO. He pretends to show him respects, respects his ambition, calls him a cockroach because, you know, he never goes away. He's like a pest, etc., etc. He says he, you know, totally disingenuously, he says he loves the locker room, and he says he has to love the locker room because that's what a leader does. He says, I put food on everybody's table, but, unfortunately... Now I can't do that for K.O. and his family. He calls out Adam Pearce and the absolute indignity of uh, Paul Heyman yelling at the commentators to get Adam Pearce out there. He's like, do you know who that is? That's Roman Reigns. That's Roman Reigns demanding that Adam Pearce comes out there. Eventually he comes out. Roman Reigns throws his attention up to the Tron. They show a replay of the beatdown from last week, and he says, now, now you gotta be a man. Now you gotta admit responsibility for your mistake. Last week I said I was done 
with Kevin Owens, you gave him a match anyway, you made the wrong choice, you put your friend in danger, alluding to the history between Adam Pearce and KO, which I don't know anything about because I don't watch ROH or wherever they know each other from. I I fall down in that regard, do I not? Uh, tonight he's, and then he says, tonight you made a gauntlet, you made a gauntlet to find me a new number one contender like I can't pick a new challenger, do you think I'm stupid? Are you disrespecting me? And he steps up to him like he's going to have a match with Adam Pearce. Foreshadowing. Um, he's got his hands on him. Uh, he gets pulled off by him and he says, all right, he collects himself and he says, all right, you're safe for now. And that's the end of the segment. Adam Pearce, um, I know we don't like the the GM role, the uh, the Johnny Aces and the and the Teddy Longs and the Vicky Guerreros, etc. But Adam Pierce as just like the guy that has the unfortunate job of announcing the news and making a couple decisions here and there, he's all right because he's pretty much playing straight man to all the wrestlers, and that's not a terrible terrible thing. Anyways, that takes us into commercial break, and immediately when we get back, we have a really really athletic Intercontinental Championship match between Big E and Apollo Crews. Now, there was a slight heel tone to uh, Apollo Crews' promo last week when they were in the back. They had won their impromptu tag match. He said, you know, hey, I hear you're going to you're gonna do an open challenge next week. Well, you don't have to wait that long. I'll take you up on that challenge. And hey, I kind of helped you get that belt, so uh, let's see what happens when you don't have any help. Now, they left it last week as a way that could have been interpreted one of two ways. A, he was trying to punk him out. B, he was doing, show, doing that, like... Uh, that thing that baby faces do, like, hey, no disrespect, you're a great wrestler, I'm a great wrestler, but I'm coming for your title. Um, but they left it kind of ambiguous, which is good. Big E, everybody's happy about The guy's athletic as hell, he's a powerhouse. Uh, long, Big, long story to get him back to the Intercontinental Championship, which was, I believe, his first title when he came up to the main roster. Apollo Crews, on the other hand, is the big, jacked-up athletic guy who's also way, way, way underutilized, but not quite as popular as Big E. So this was a foregone conclusion, even though it was an awesome match. Um, Cruz starts off the match, and like I say, the guy's athletic as hell, but I still don't expect him to start off the match with a shotgun dropkick. That's that's cool. That's something we, we expect out of like a Finn Balor or somebody like that. But he starts it off with a shotgun dropkick, uh, running back elbow and a low blow, but, or not a low blow, an elbow. I can read my writing. I promise it's late in the day. By Big E. Uh, apron splash by Big E. A boot and integrate by Cruz. Corner spears by Cruz. A splash, some rolling Germans. An apron moonsault by Cruz. A superplex and... A weird pinning thing. Basically, Cruz gets them on the second rope for a second rope superplex, and they fall, and they do that thing where both guys sort of latch onto the other, and both of their shoulders are on the mat. The referee counts the pin, and we immediately cut to commercial break, and I kind of like that. Oh, there's disarray. You know, please come back after the commercial break. It's not quite as catchy as restaurant quality, pitcher in pitcher, I tell you what, but it is a thing. Uh, when we get back, we see the two of them arguing. We see the referee handing the belt back to Big E and trying to explain to Apollo Crews that it's a double pin, which means it's a draw, which means that the title has been retained by Big E, and, and he, sort of, he sort of starts to egg him on a little bit. He's like, hey, come on, man, I know you. You don't want to win like that, and Big E's telling him, like that's that's the rules I don't make the rules but everybody bitch slaps him like good and hard and uh, Biggie hands the belt to the ref says uh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna go ahead and uh, restart this match insane series of belly to belly suplexes by Biggie a running splash by Biggie high knees by Cruz a frog splash and near fall super kick scissor kick spine buster by Cruz standing moonsault by Cruz and a Brock lock by Biggie I love the fact that Biggie being the power guy has adopted the Brock lock it's not new it's been happening since he broke away from the New Day, but it really, it really is, like, you're, you're hanging by a string, that string just happens to be your leg, I like it, Insiguri by Cruz, Urinagi by Big E, sets him up for the big ending, and Big E wins, and he basically gets in his face after the match, he's like, I'm not that guy, but don't test me, and I'm like, that's good, it's, it, it's not Big E entirely breaking character, it's, it's not exactly Apollo Crews breaking character either, because you can believe that Apollo Crews is frustrated with his current situation, you can believe that Big E is this guy that likes to have fun, but he doesn't want that to be the thing that labels him as not a threat. So you can come, you can go into this match and coming out and come out of this match, uh, not really hating either guys, having a great amount of, of, of respect and understanding for both guys, and like I say, two athletic powerhouses that shouldn't be able to do the things that they do in the ring. The only thing that was missing in this match, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of looking forward to seeing it because I wanted to see how Apollo would sell it, is the uh, the inside out uh, apron spear that Big E does. We didn't get that, and that's kind of a bummer for me. 
Backstage, Sonya Deville and Adam Pierce have a really, really weird sort of nondescript conversation. She introduces herself to Adam Pierce. She's happy to be back on SmackDown. She sort of she does this weird passive aggressive thing. She's like, I'm just happy to be back. I'm not upset that my friend just carried on without me. I'm not upset that she went to Raw and just randomly grabbed her a new tag team partner. And, you know, I'm just happy to be here. Kind of like you. Kind of like, you know, you're going to have a match with Roman tonight. And he's like, what, what, wait, wait, no, no, no. I haven't wrestled in like six years. I'm not having a match with Roman tonight. She's like, oh. Oh, okay. Then we go to the back. And... Unfortunately, once again, somebody decided to give a microphone to Bianca Belair, you know, aka Mean Girls number five. She's joining the Rumble. Yay! She got handed a decent spotlight in the Rumble last year. She got to be the Iron Woman. She got to eliminate a fuck ton of people. Bailey comes out, quite rightfully so, and says, Yeah, you eliminated a lot of people last year, but you didn't eliminate me. You know why you didn't eliminate me? Because I was the champion last year. Where's your title? Da 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 da. Puts her in her place. Wonderful. Now, we flip gears immediately from that to Carmella putting Sasha Banks in her place <laughs> in a backstage promo, which is awesome. Totally shooting down the absolutely bullshit announcement that Sports Illustrated gave her a number one spot on some list of wrestlers that's irrelevant by its inaccuracy. Um. <laughs> I mean, how much more do you want to give to Sasha Banks? Jesus, 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 Jesus Christ. Um, just says, you know, keep keep working, keep slaving away. I'm going to be here chilling because that's what you can do when it comes to you a little more naturally. I love Carmella. I do. It's good. Corey Graves is a lucky dude. I don't even care. Uh, Street Profits versus the Dirty Dogs for the Tag Team Championships. This was a good match, too. I like the Street Profits. Street Profits are good as fuck. Came into this injured because they absolutely street fucked uh, Montez Ford's leg last week. So that was, you knew that was going to be the story going in. But it is for the Tag Team Championships. I love the Dirty Dogs name for, uh, for Rude and Ziggler. Uh, I think I might have mentioned this last week, actually. It does remind me of when Kazarian and Daniels were in TNA as the Dirty Heels. Uh, it, it definitely has tones of that. They finally got ring gear that's kind of matching. They both came out in sort of mock Triple H Attitude Era jackets, you know, with the leather over the denim, or at least those those respective colors. It was good. Um, Dawkins and Ziggler start the Masters. A waist lock by Dawkins. A side headlock and a toss drop kick by Dawkins. Double shoulder tackle by the Prophets. Right hands by Ziggler. Mud hole stops by Rude. Choke on the ropes. Uh, I cannot read my own writing. I think that says snake eyes. Body shots by Ford. Rude clips the bad leg. And we're off to the races. Suicide flip dive by Ford, who's dumb and injures his own leg. Once again, as we go to the commercial break, I'm going to cough because my mouth is very, very dry. <coughs> Coming back from the commercial break, there's a mud hole stomp by Dawkins, a suplex and exploder, and a corner splash, bulldog by Dawkins. Dawkins and Rude trade some shots for a little bit. Right hands, left hands, kicks, etc. Uh, drop kick by Ziggler, choke on the ropes, and he rakes the face at the same time. So not only is have, he's losing his air, he's losing his uh, his windpipe access, he's also having to just like rake at his face, which is not a good way to spend a Friday night. Uh, grounded front face lock by Ziggler, it turns it into a gator roll. Gator roll pulling him away from his partner towards his own partner, which is good. Serves two purposes. It's a nice little storytelling beat. And I don't think I've ever seen Ziggler use the gator roll before, but I could be wrong. Neckbreaker by Rude and a hard Irish whip. Rude and Ford brawl on the outside. Rolling lariats by Ford in the ring. Ziggler manages to leapfrog to the top turnbuckle and hit a top rope X-Factor that was not clean at all. It was a little ugly looking, and that made it better for, for, for somebody that's already injured. It was really good. Super kick by Ford, chop block by Ziggler, fisherman suplex by Root, and then a spinebuster zigzag combination gets the win and the championships for Root and Ziggler. So... Yes, with all due respect to the Street Profits, two of the most underutilized single talents on the WWE main roster at least got themselves some tag gold, which is all good. And they go to pose with the belts and then see that the Street Profits are still on the ground in the ring. They toss them out of the ring so that the ring is all there so that they can do the posing with the belts, and it's all good. It's all good for the new year. If you checked out the last um, episode that Jake and I did, 
when we were talking about the Dusty Rhodes Classic or whatever, I actually suggested that these two guys pop into NXT as surprise entrants in the Dusty Classic. I still think that's a good idea, and now that they are main roster tag team champions, that would give some clout to the Dusty Classic. I don't think it's something that they're actually going to do. I think it's something they need to think about, though. Um... I wouldn't necessarily say the same thing for uh, Alexander and, and Benjamin, but um, it is what it is. Uh, we see Adam Pearce in the back still talking to Sonya Deville. Uh, they get interrupted by Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman tries to smooth things over with Adam Pearce, give him a handshake, reintroduce himself. Uh, I, just want you to, I just want you to remember that I was the voice of reason. I was the one that pulled Roman off of you earlier this evening, and uh, I have some friends, and I've pulled some strings, and because I've pulled some strings, you are in the gauntlet match for the number one contendership to Roman Reigns' championship at the Royal Rumble, and Adam Pearce basically shits his pants. Um, we have a brief segment in the back with the Riot Squad, who are all dressed up in their ring gear, ready to go, which is odd because they don't have a match tonight. But they do run into Billy Kay, and she wants to celebrate their win last week, and she wants to be their their manager, their advocate, their something or other. She's got her resume. She's like, I, I, I've I started being a little bit more grungy so I can fit in with you guys. I've been listening to Blink 182. I've even put mosh pitting on my resume. <laughs> and the look, I was, I, I know I'm biased because I really do love Ruby Riot, and I really hope they do something with her. At least give them a shot at the tag titles again. Her expressions during all of this are, are fucking phenomenal. Like, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, earlier on in the night, I don't know whether it was here or whether it was on social, um, because everything's a blur with WWE, uh, there was a point where she tried to butter herself up to Natalia and offered to make her, like, peanut chocolate chip cookies because they're her favorite, and then cried about that to the Riot Squad so that they'd at least be somewhat nice to her. And that was... That was really weird, wasn't it? And... I mean, that's basically the first half of the show. The second half of the show is the gauntlet match. The gauntlet match was Rey Mysterio, Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura, Baron Corbin, and Daniel Bryan, and Adam Pearce. <laughs> um, Rey Mysterio is out first. Uh, out at number two is Sami Zayn. Uh, he comes out with his own camera crew because he's going to document the conspiracy that's happening to him. WWE, he's surprised WWE even put the, him into the gauntlet match, but of course he put him in at number one, uh, the most you know, inadvantageous spot in the entire gauntlet match. The fact that he keeps referring to himself as having the number one spot when he literally came out number two um, after Rey, Rey Mysterio was already in the ring just made it a little funnier. It is like the Royal Rumble where you try to talk about advantage and number one being the worst spot and number two is in the exact same position because they're starting together. But it's still the fact that he came out second and the fact that he kept on referring to himself as being put in at number one. It was, it was pure Sami Zayn shit and he was he was promoing all the way to the ring to the point that he went, he turned around to put his microphone down. The bell rang. There was a drop kick, a 619, a splash, a pin, and Rey Mysterio gets a win in like 10 seconds. So they're going to play this up. He's going to do the conspiracy theory thing. I'm going to love it. I think that Sami Zayn is going to have a hell of a performance in this year's Royal Rumble. I don't know what I'm basing that on, other than the fact that it's going to be really funny, uh, but I think that's going to happen. So the next match, uh, or sorry, the next person coming out is Nakamura, so the next match we have is Rey Mysterio versus Nakamura, which doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Uh, color and elbow tie-up, there's a headlock by Nakamura and a takedown, a rolling kick by Rey, body shots by Nakamura, knee shots by Nakamura, a baseball slide, flip dive thing, power bomb. You know what Rey Mysterio does to the outside, uh, on the floor to Nakamura by Rey Mysterio, but then Nakamura recovers, hits him with the sliding knee and a hesitation drop kick on the outside. Snapmare knee drop combination by Nakamura, seated senton by Rey, head scissors 619, but the splash is blocked and then he gets quickly locked into an armbar. Nakamura is your winner, moving on to face Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin, who barely has an entrance, beats down Nakamura from behind and then even though Ray's already been eliminated, turns his attention to Rey Mysterio for a little bit. He basically hits him with a sideways choke slam into the turnbuckles, which was nice. Um, I may have missed it. I think the the Knights of the Knights of the Wolf gimmick schnabitz there uh, were there as well, but I honestly couldn't tell you. I was in the middle of, of taking notes, so if they were there, I missed them. But the next thing is uh, is Nakamura versus Corbin. Um, Gut shots by Corbin when uh, when he does put his 
attention back where it's supposed to be on Shinsuke, not the guy that's not in the match anymore. Elbows to the head, body shots. Corbin needs the post shoulder first, but then uh, hits a spine buster on uh, on Nakamura sideways into the post on the outside. Right hands by Corbin, single leg drop kick by Nakamura, Insiguri by Nakamura, second rope drop kick, deep six by Corbin as Nakamura tries to go for the Kinshasa. It was a nice little counter. Triangle choke by Nakamura, single arm power bomb by Corbin out of the triangle choke. Um, super kick by Nakamura. Nakamura gets the win, and the next one out is Daniel Bryan. And the commentators, rightfully so, talk about how this alone is a pay-per-view worthy match. But as much as I agree with them, as much as I agree with them, it's weird when they do it in the process or in the middle of something like this, where Daniel Bryan's coming in fresh and Nakamura has already had two matches, quote unquote. But anyways, uh, they do square off. There's a drop kick by Bryan to start off their exchange, and then I use this a lot, but it's the it's the it's the uh, first time in a long time that I've gotten to use it on Daniel Bryan. We get say it loud. Say it proud, the Daniel Bryan silly kicks. Oh yes, suicide dive by Bryan. There's a super kick in the midair by Nakamura. Single leg crab by Bryan that gets transitioned into an ankle lock. German suplex by Bryan and more Daniel Bryan silly kicks. In the corner, it's good. Boot by Nakamura, cross arm breaker gets reversed into a cross arm breaker of Daniel Bryan's own. The yes lock turns into a modified rings of Saturn. He throws him into the corner and yes, trifecta. More Daniel Bryan silly kicks. Oh yes, Daniel Bryan tries to top row Brana and he gets tossed off really awkwardly. I really hope that wasn't a botch because that fall looked really dangerous, I'm not going to lie. Top rope Kinshasa by Nakamura and knees to the gut. Both men trade some shots. There's body shots in the corner by Brian. Two corner drop kicks by Brian, but Nakamura explodes out of the corner with a Kinshasa and gets the win. Now there's a pause in the action. Daniel Bryan taking a moment to uh, to have a respectful handshake with Nakamura, and I think they even hugged. I could be wrong. I could be misremembering that. But I think somewhere in the middle here, between him being respectful with Daniel Bryan, between him getting the cheap shots from from Baron Corbin, uh, and his relatively decent exchange with Rey Mysterio, is this the beginning hints of a face turn for Nakamura? I know a lot of people on Twitter seem to think so. That's fine. And then, with a lot of time left, we see that Roman Reigns comes out. Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, Jey Uso, whatever the case may be, stand on the ramp and wait for Adam Pearce to join Adam Pearce out of his suit, out of his tie, in some kind of, like, workout pants and a, obviously a WWE hoodie, because that's what they gotta do. And they escort him to the ring. They then hit the ring before the bell can ring and beat the ever-loving snot out of Nakamura, and then they throw Pierce in the ring. They super kick Adam Pierce. They put Adam Pierce on top of Shinsuke Nakamura. They intimidate the referee into ringing the bell. The referee has to count the pin. And as we stand right now, Royal Rumble is, is a weird thing already because we're probably getting Drew McIntyre versus Goldberg after what happened this past Monday. And now we're getting Roman Reigns versus Adam Pierce. I don't know. I don't know. Do with that what you will. Um, really, really interesting, the square off between Jey Uso and Shinsuke Nakamura is what I'm going to say. So, as a middle-of-the-card match at Royal Rumble... I'm very intrigued by this new heel, Jey Uso, taking on a potentially brand new face, um, Shinsuke Nakamura. But I mean, look, look at the night. I, I, sorry, I'm pausing because I don't really know how to, how to articulate this. Like, I want to laugh. I want to sit here and cackle my ass off like I usually do with sarcastic shit. But look at how this night went down. Great opening promo but from Roman and company, including Adam Pearce in his role. Um, Big E basically defended his title twice. Uh, the Dirty Dogs got the tag titles, which is fun, if nothing else. Uh, Carmella put Sasha Banks in her place. Bailey put Bianca Belair in her place. We had a great gauntlet match for the most part. We had potentially the babyface turn of Shinsuke Nakamura. And a guy that's not an active wrestler has a title shot at one of the big four at the, at the Royal Rumble. I... I don't know. They're, I'm laughing, but also like Adam Pierce, because of course Adam Pierce. Why would you have people on your active roster 
getting title shots at the Universal and WWE Championship. That's just, that's just, you know, inside the box and go outside the box, go into the literal boss's office and find a number one contender for currently the best heel on the main roster. I, I don't know. Uh, I should hate this. But you guys know me, I have a very lackadaisical view of the main roster. I'm, I'm reviewing SmackDown uh, because of the current global situation, and I got nowhere else to go, and it's better than Raw, and there's a lot of good shit on it, but like stuff like this still isn't going to surprise. If this happened on NXT, I'd be apoplectic right now. But um, <laughs> I, I'm going to hop off here, I'm going to go on Twitter, I'm going to laugh at people that are losing their minds over it, because, because yeah, it's it's kind of like, uh, what's a good example from back in the day, Deluxe Man reacting to Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at WrestleMania, yeah, that's a great, that's a great example, Daniel Bryan, I don't know, Daniel Bryan, Nakamura, I, the thing of, thing of it is, is we knew it wasn't going to be Daniel Bryan, because Daniel Bryan's already announced that he's going to be in the Royal Rumble. Nakamura would have been a very, would have been a very cool match, potentially, because wasn't, the, weren't they the last two people in the Royal Rumble that Nakamura won? So there's a good callback to the Royal Rumble and title match happening at the Royal Rumble. I don't know, like... Without any disrespect, I have no interest in seeing Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio. Like, that's that's not a thing. And Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn is, like, sort of cocky dickhead versus I'm gonna kill you dickhead. So, I mean, this ain't it. For everybody that's losing their mind right now, like, this definitely ain't it. But I don't know what it is either. Everybody wants Big E, but that's probably gonna happen at WrestleMania. So cool your jets, wait four months. We might even be out of quarantine by then. Anyways, this is SmackDown, second SmackDown of the year. It can't be too bad so far. Let me know if you guys are enjoying the SmackDown reviews. Uh, you guys know NXT is my bread and butter. Thought I'd reach out and start doing this for a little bit. Uh, I am going to be honest with you, as soon as the world starts opening up at all, this will be the first thing that drops off of this channel, only because... I mean, you guys know where my loyalties are, but I'm having fun in the meantime, and, it, and it's good for a laugh, if nothing else. Anyways, I've been Spaz, your YWC Reality Checks. Uh, subscribe up there. I can speak, I swear. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys.